Hi Virgo, my name is Sarah Tess. Welcome to this collective reading. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you all. If you're new, thanks for being here. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Please subscribe. That is really helping my channel grow. Also, I do have personal services open. So if you would like to do tarot with me, if you'd like to do Reiki with me or yoga with me, all can be done virtually or it can be in person in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right, all my information is down below. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and get into this reading. So I needed a little break before doing this and I put in my earbuds and got some water, sat down and just kind of sat with your energy for a little bit and it really kind of hit me, okay? This Virgo energy today feels like it's love centered. It feels like you're missing someone or someone is missing you. It feels like the energy is being pulled in both directions so it feels it feels mutual to me, um, but it's kind of an interesting energy because we have this energy of longing for someone, loving someone, one, 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 and seeing them and wanting them and being around them, but then not being able to have them. It feels like this lusty kind of sad energy of before you even approach the connection, you know it can't happen, or it's not going to be the same as it feels in your head or in your heart, right? So it's like whatever you've dreamed it to be isn't what you think reality will be like, um, or vice versa. So let's get into it. I'm not really sure. It feels kind of sad, um, but it also it feels like really, really unconditionally lovey dovey, like. If it's sad but it's like this love that feels like it's not gonna end um, now there's also this energy of something feeling really cold and distant but it's not as cold and distant or as dark and scary as it looks so there may be some sort of disconnect between you and this person or like maybe one person has more emotions than the other person shows and so one person might like shut down and then they look cold um to save face or to like not look a particular way but internally they're feeling all the emotions but externally they look like ice right whereas you might hold your your energy on your shoulders on your face like you can't hide it and as much as you'd like to be cold you still love unconditionally and it's hard for you to get in that like cold energy because you love love and you know that having love makes you feel human okay feeling emotions makes you feel human and so you're not scared of the immense intensity that comes within it whereas the other person feels distant or feels like they they're trying to block the feeling of emotion so they don't have to get distracted by it Hmm. Okay, so we have the blue magnesite. This is all about the throat chakra, so speaking up, three through three. And then we have peridot, which is all about the heart chakra, love for self, love for others, compassion for yourself and for others, self-love, self-care. Um, and then we have the light bulb and the goal gang. So what I was feeling with the goal gang is like, You feel like you're one, like you feel more than one when you're with this person. You feel like it's like a tribe, like your person, your community, your safe place. Um, and so it feels like very powerful. It feels like it's more enriched with connection than like a typical one-on-one -on -one relationship is. And it feels like a gang, of, like a group, like a, a tribe rather than just two people. Um, and then with this light bulb energy, it is this light bulb, I feel like there's a light bulb in the midst of both of this, where it feels like, hmm, okay, well my crown chakra feels stimulated, and I feel like I'm being thought about, or I feel like I'm thinking about people constantly, um, or energy is going both ways, and you feel like your energy is being pulled because this connection is so intense and deep that it feels like you can't avoid thinking about each other. Um, and then it also feels at the same time like 
you stand out. Whoever you're dealing with looks at you like you stand out. Like they look up and they see a crowd of people and they're like, okay, you know, everybody looks similar, but you, for some reason, just stand out way closer to the screen. And then you're not even really closer to the screen, you're just really, your energy projects forward more than other people's does. And it's not a projection that's negative, it's like, wow, that's really beautiful. Like, luscious, beautiful, stunning like put someone in awe when they look at you um, and it may actually confuse them because they're not used to looking at someone and being like, oh my gosh. Like they're not used to feeling the intensity of emotions that they're feeling when they look at you and so it's confusing them and they're not sure how they feel. Some days they feel droopy and they're like sad because they're like, no, this can't happen. And some days they see you and it's like, oh my God, like my heart and soul is lit on fire and I feel like this is the best day because I got to see you or hear about you or hear from you, right? But there's this like back and forth energy of tug and pull of like, I can, I can't, I can, I can't, I can, I can't. And I'm not sure if it's coming from you or from them or from both of you. So we're going to get into this further and see what the heck is happening. Okay, so we're going to start with this deck this is the tarot training deck so it's gonna be very direct which i think is what this this needs it needs direct communication it feels like communication might be blocked like that's the problem yeah okay so what is this mutual energy for you two ten of wands accomplishments responsibilities burden completion hard work so you both are hard workers you're both focusing on a lot right now manifesting things working on your abundance working on your pentacle um that might be the third party in the situation where it's like y'all are distracted by other things and so it's like you know how are you going to make this a priority ace of cups right so there's the magician and the ace of cups here How are you gonna make this commitment, this marriage, this proposal a priority? Because it feels like it's spiritual. It's feel like it feels like it's meant to happen. It feels like your intuitions are being drawn to each other. It feels like you're divinely guided by the 5D energy of you, the higher self energy, the spirit energy of you. But the 3D energy of you is like, uh, we have things to do, you know? And it's like, uh, you know this will get in my way that's what it, feel, it feels like two of wands it's like this is gonna get in my way i'm discovering new things i'm working on my future i'm planning things i'm you know progressing forward and if i connect with this eight eight abundance energy it might bring me abundance but you know what's it gonna do to my pentacle that has those lovers energy here so it's like you're choosing between having the world and love and it's weird because there's this magician energy that's like, well, I mean, you could have one or the other. You could have both. Um, it's up to you how you choose to approach the situation. Now, I think this is a, this feels like it's a mutual energy. Yeah, it feels like it's a mutual energy. So we have the opportunity to have the world, you know, harmony, accomplishments, achievements in love and in, in business, in life, you know, happiness, right? Feeling really grounded. And then you also have the opportunity to have love, deep, deep connections, deep partnerships, deep unions, deep commitments, whether that's in business or in love, or it could be both, right? Life is all about duality. Now, what's going on is that you feel apathetic four of cups you feel like very emotional um about the situation and, and and it feels like it's both emotional it's like you both are sitting in your emotions like how on earth can I have this and if I think about this too much then I'm too emotional and so I might as well shut off and not think about it at all because you know being cold and being icy is better than feeling it too much because you got shit to do right that's the energy it's like 
I can't think about this all day. And so I have to pretend like you don't exist so that I can get my life together. So you're suffering in silence, both of you, it feels like, three of swords. There's this energy of like regretting not trying, but then regretting trying too. Like it's this energy of like, no matter what, you're gonna feel like you're in some sort of illusion. You're gonna feel confused. You're gonna feel one, like you're missing an opportunity if you don't go towards this connection, but then you're also gonna feel like what happens if you go towards this connection? Like, will you regret doing that? Because it could cause A, B, C, D, E, F, G to happen, but also like you don't know what's gonna happen. So you can't really plan for something to happen, but it's like an internal fear that's blocking you from even having the opportunity to transform this connection into something different. So it's like you're grieving it before it even half it happens. You're, you're feeling pained emotionally, right? You're feeling the heartbreak before it even happens because you're like, you're telling yourself it's not possible. Hmm. So the reason it may feel like it's not possible is because there's this Hierophant energy. This may be a connection that's intertwined with something maybe not being very ethical or like not morally right, that you could be connecting through like work, religion, school, your job, you know, it could be some sort of like it's feeling like church and state kind of energy of like separation, right? Like you can't cross those lines or something. Um, and so you're trying to stay really grounded. You're trying to stay really earthed in this energy, rooted down in yourself and not get teeter-tottered by the lust of potential in this connection. So it feels like whatever it is could be like breaking traditions or could be, what is the word? Like looked at funny. Like it could be just some sort of connection where it's like, we don't know how people are gonna receive this or view this or, but yeah, it feels like there's this question of how people are gonna view you and this person, both of you. It, I don't know, it's this energy of like, y'all both are worried about your external appearance rather than how you feel internally. Okay, so let's see. Is there a way to work through this fear or this blockage? How, how can they both work through this blockage? The hermit energy by being alone, thinking about things, having some self-reflection, meditating it on it all, you know, being introspective and really coming up with a solution through solitude is what it feels like. Separation. Um, because it's like when you guys are t near each other or talk to each other or whatever, it's like you, one little snippet of energy of connection, like brings it all back together, 1333. It's like being away allows you to detach and do the work that you need to do, but being partially together makes it hard because there is that connection of like, well, what if, or I wish, or I want, or can we talk, right? Interesting. Okay. What, do, what does this collective and their person need to know? Interesting. All of these came out reversed. And normally I don't take reversals, but every single one of these flipped out reverse. So I'm going to read them reversed. Okay. So we have the Five of Cups reverse, which is moving on, forgiving, healing, and accepting. We have judgment in reverse, having doubt, self-loathing, criticism, stunted growth. And we have the Seven of Swords in reverse, imposter syndrome, deceit, extra marital affairs. And I think I asked, how can you move forward? And it's basically saying, get out of your own head. 
get out of your own way because this doubt, this self-lack, this energy of just judge, judging yourself, judging the situation, being too mental heavy in it is completely taking away from the goodness of the life that you're living right now. This situation, you have to accept it as it is. And if it comes in in a different way, great. But forcing it or overthinking about it is not going to help anybody in the situation. So allowing things to naturally unfold is what you're basically being told. Tapping into your emperor energy. You could be saying 444 or 1414. But being a leader, you know, making your own judgment call on this, right? deciding what you feel and sticking with it and staying strong in your boundaries five by five and being strong in your passion and your internal fire it feels like it's time to set structure and stability into place and tap into your leadership energy of inner strength and abundance in your own soul as an individual person yeah because there is goodness coming in for you you just don't see it yet okay the Nine of Cups is coming in for you and also the Wheel of Fortune. So this Nine of Cups is all about wish fulfillment, luxury, satisfaction, success, gratitude. So you need to be in a higher vibration. You can't sit in this sulky, sad, heartbroken energy because it's not going to help you at all. It's actually going to hinder you and it's going to hold you back. So you need to know that the Nine of Pentacles is also coming in. There's abundance, there's success, there's independence, there's prosperity, there's luxury, there's things that you've always wanted coming in and you're not, I don't think you're meant to be in this connection yet because you're working on your success. And that's, that's why there's like this push and pull energy, this, this teeter totter energy is because it's not yet ready. It's like a bun in the oven you know like a baby you know is not meant to come out at three months old you know it's meant to wait the nine months right till for its fullest expansion and and it's similar to like if you put cookies in the oven right like you can't really take them out two minutes early because then they're going to be way too soft and they're not going to be right they're not going to be edible and you can't take them out two minutes too late either because then they're going to be burnt and crispy and like unedible so there's this divine timing that's at play. Yeah, and I feel it in my throat and I feel it in my like belly. It's in my gut. It's like this internal gut that's telling you that you have to work hard right now. You have to set routines. You have to be really productive and you can't you can't get distracted. Both of you feel that way. And this distra this distraction is each other. This devilish energy is each other. It's your temptation. But it also could be the fear to not step forward towards each other either. You may have um, some sort of addiction or codependency, both of you might, separately, um, that you're working on. It could even be envy or greed or like being jealous, right, of each other for some reason. But there's this Wheel of Fortune energy that's coming in towards the end, right? This Wheel of Fortune is telling you that your your luck's going to change. Your money is going to become better. Your destiny is to have greatness, right? There's opportunities coming in. There's connections coming in. Whatever is coming in right around the corner, like tomorrow or in a minute or whatever, is coming in with a burning flame that's going to set things, I mean, set things off real quick in a really good way. So that's why you you can't get distracted right now because there's something that's meant to happen before this connection comes in. Justice. You could be seeing 11-11 or you could even be seeing the Four of Wands. But this, this Justice card is telling you that there's balance coming in there's fairness coming in. You can trust in this process. You can trust in this death and rebirth energy. You can trust in the process of darkness and light, the transition, the rising like a phoenix. You can trust in the things crumbling to create newer, better things in the future for yourself. King of Wands. 
there's a fire within you burning right now that's saying you have to do this you have to focus on your creativity you have to focus on your entrepreneurship you have to focus on your leadership skills you have to stay motivated you can't get distracted right now because the change will get pushed back if you get distracted. That's what it feels like, yeah. Ace of Pentacles. So whatever you're manifesting right now, it's gonna take some hard work and responsibility and hermit energy to get things done because this is a new adventure for you and it's bringing in abundance for you. And so you need to really stay aligned within yourself and not get distracted by other people. There's something about protecting your personal energy right now, protecting your peace, okay? Protecting your mental health. Now, this temperous energy is saying that you've been really patient. You've been working through challenges. You've been working through hardships. You've been working through the mental health, you know, breakdowns to have breakthroughs. Um, and there is balance coming in. There is harmony coming in. The things that you've been working on are alchemizing and coming into existence. Okay, so, yeah, eight of wands, alignment, air travel action, movement, quick, 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 you know, quick action, quick, quick things coming in, 21, 21. It's like, not 20, 20 eyesight, it's 21, 21. It, there's like pure clarity, like better than clear energy coming in for you to have this king of pentacles, for you to have this abundance, this prosperity, this security this wealth this leadership right and what it's actually calling on also is your queen of pentacles so it's bringing you in your balanced energy the king and the queen it's bringing in the masculine energy and the feminine energy so whatever this is you're healing your masculine energy and your feminine energy and you're balancing out the skills within yourself so that you can call in the right energy for you in the future you're learning how to be structured strong independent a leader while also being someone who can be fluid and creative and playful and curious right about life taking chances but also being smart within it so it's a very interesting energy this queen of pentacles is all about being practical but also being really creative and then this king of pentacles is more about abundance and wealth and security and so you're learning how to balance those skills equally and have both which is gonna really help you. It's a very grounded energy. It's a Virgo energy, it's a Capricorn energy, right? So you're trusting your intuition right now, the high priestess, and you're listening to your inner voice and you're, you're saying, okay, I got it, I'll go do this. I will listen, I will accept this mission, right? This Empress energy is coming in too. So this is, this Empress energy is fertility, it's self-expression, it's stability, it's abundance it's motherhood it's whatever it may be for you right this this birthing anew there's something that you're birthing into existence right now that you're you've been really cultivating and curating and taking time with and it's about to blossom it's about to birth it's about to come out of the canal right it's about to come into this world that's why you have you've that's why you've had to take a break or that's why you've had to let go of toxic things that's why you've had to become more pure in your energy hmm to find strength within yourself to learn who you are to be more confident in your skin to understand the vitality within you the inner strength the inner fire the inner flame right to see that you're so compassionate and so loving. And you may not have realized that. You may have been someone who really did shut off the world because you felt like it was easier to not feel emotions. And so you wouldn't get too tied down. That's the energy. It's like keeping people close, but not too close because you know if they're too close, then you'll get too attached. And so you keep people at a distance to make sure that it's a safe distance so that you can emotionally not get too involved out of the safety of your own self. Interesting. But what's coming in for you is two of cups. Both of you is two of cups. Commitment, marriage, unity, partnerships, new possibilities, right? There's something really special. There's, there's a love connection coming in for you and it's bringing you in the 10 of cups. 
It's your blessing. So whatever you feel deeply in your heart that you want right now, it's coming in because you've been going through the process of metamorphosis. Transcending the old, learning to be more confident, and it's bringing you in alignment and bliss. It's helping you learn to tap into your intuition more, to trust your gifts and trust yourself. It's, lear it's helping you learn to trust your gut more, your gut instincts. It may be something in the past where like you didn't really trust your gut and then you realize like, oh, my gut actually is right a lot of times. But then like sometimes you questioned it, but now you're not questioning it because you're seeing that it actually does kind of send you in the right direction. It does tell you when the green light is go. It tells you when the light is red. It tells you when the light is yellow. And you're learning to go more with the flow within that and you're growing amongst it. Yeah, you're growing through this tower. You're growing through this destruction to have a happy life. To have a happy life. To live the dreamy, 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 creative, happy life that you've always wanted. You know, you were always in that dreamer state, but now you're bringing your dreams into reality because you have healed. You have a thirst, a hunger, a drive, and it's sending you forward 2626. Okay. Let's see how your person is feeling about you. Uh, Virgo, they feel blissful when they think of you. Okay, and how do you feel when you think about them? Liberated. Okay. How do they view you in love? Ooh. Wow. Optimistic, angry, and distracted. So they view you as a distraction, distraction which makes them angry but they're also optimistic about this connection because they want it to be something more. And how do you feel about them in love? You've accepted whatever the heck is happening. You're like, okay, well, you know, we'll see what happens. But you're not holding your breath, it seems like. Okay, and how do you, how do, how do they see you in work? Mm, they see you as someone who's disappointed in work right now, but they also see you as someone who's worthy of greatness, who also knows their worth and is waiting for the right thing to come in. And how do you view them in work? How do you view them in work? Interesting, you view them as lonely you also view them as spiritual and you view them as an intellectual. You view them as someone who prioritizes work. Who is very spiritually connected and who is very smart. And how do you mutually feel at peace? How do you mutually feel? Funny, my right ear was ringing a second ago. Oh my gosh, too many cards came out. Okay. You mutually feel empathetic towards one another. You mutually feel inspired by one another. You mutually feel nervous about each other. You also mutually feel insecure. So, You're resenting something. What are you resenting? What are you both resenting? What are you mutually resenting? Love. It almost like bothers you guys that you love each other. You're like, this is annoying. <laughs> um, that's funny. Like, not funny, but it's funny. Yeah, you both are feeling pained by this. But you're both confident that there is love. And that's the, that's the thing that's hard for you both. It's like, I know there's love here. And we both know each other's worth. And that's confusing and annoying. And causes anxiety. 
interesting. Okay, let's see. Um, let's get you both one of these. Actually, let's just focus on you. Let's focus on you. <laughs> I'm hearing in my head, um, out of sight, out of mind, right? Like, <laughs> like you don't acknowledge it, it's not there. If you don't see it, it's not there. If it's hidden behind a door, it's not there. <laughs> So let's focus on you. Let's see what's going on with you. Anything that, hmm, I almost heard Aquarius. Anything that Virgo needs to hear today. Interesting, I'm hearing time is ticking. I think we started this off talking about time, like one minute until something happens. So, yeah, it feels like there's something like on a clock. There's something going on on the clock. All right, let's go ahead and read all these out. For you, what's going on? We have 11th house. So you're working on friends, you're working on creating like-minded groups and connections. You want healthy connections, so that's what's going on with you. You are destined to have amazing energy in your life, to have a state of flow, to be abundant, to be fireful, to be fueled by passion and desire. You have this Capricorn energy, you may be tapping into it or connecting with it, but it's talking about someone who's being ambitious, who is taking really smart steps towards a better future. You're listening to divine timing. You can even see this little clocky clock on here. You know the sand is going to eventually, you know, go completely out and you'll flip it back over. So you're just kind of waiting and watching uh, yeah it's like you're waiting and watching for the right thing to come in and you're just kind of like okay you know we're not going to overexert ourselves until the right thing comes the eighth house it's all about transformation good karma facing fears leaving behind a legacy you know growing and expanding after darkness and creating beautiful you know flowers and light and yumminess afterwards we have Saturn energy, which is feeling like you're restricted right now. You're working really, really hard and you feel like you're kind of in the dark, but you're trying to look at things from a higher perspective, from a more enlightened perspective, like an owl's uh, perspective. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're trying to see things more clearly in the dark and it's uncomfortable. We have this Cancer energy, so you might be feeling emotional. You're trying to nurture yourself. You're trying to protect your energy. You're trying to comfort yourself. And then we have this Aries energy, which is all about independence and passion and bravery. So you're really focused on you right now. You want the best for you. Water signs, three through three. Spirituality, emotion, intuition, and compassion. So you're really just trying to tap into your you're trying to tap into your emotions. You're no wanting, you're no longer wanting to be blocked off from emotions. That's something you've been healing, it seems like. You've been healing your heart and your self-expression. All right, let's get one card for how your person is. No, that's not what I want to ask. What is your person focused on? Healing from past hurts. Yeah, so it, it's not the right time. That's what it feels like. It's it's not the right time for that connection. So you got to just keep working on you. All right, let's find an affirmation for you today. Maybe it'll come in, but, you know, don't force anything and don't rush anything. You're moving forward. You're ready to receive. You're open to something new. And you feel like you can learn from a lot of connections and relationships and you're confident that you will have, you know, abundance and harmony and bliss in the future. So no matter what happens with this connection that you're thinking about right now, you know that eventually you will have an amazing life. So it's worth letting go. And if you think about manifestations, things don't come in when you're holding on to them too tightly. They come in when you've relinquished the pressure behind it. So if you're really have been putting pressure on something to come in, a person, a relationship, a connection, a job, an opportunity, whatever it may be. Try to just let it go, you know? Just put it into the ether that you want something to happen, but then basically forget about it. 
because then you're gonna have something beautiful that comes in. You're just getting started and you are abundant. So you need to remember that you are magical and you are intuitive and you're not meant to You can't change anybody, that's what I'm hearing. And you also can't make anyone speak. You can't make anyone have self-expression. You can only control yourself. So if you're someone who in the past has had toxic behaviors of trying to change people or trying to expect the best of them or want the best for them and hoping that you can change someone, that is a negative way to look at connections. You are not there to change people. You are there to support people and love them and want the best for them, but you are not there to change them and you cannot change anyone, right? They are the ones in charge of their own life. They choose if they're going to change themselves. So it's all about you. You need to listen to your internal call and follow your passion, follow the things that you're feeling grateful for and keep doing the work that feels best for you. Let's see how people are viewing you right now, just externally from their world. How are people viewing you? How do people view this Virgo Collective? They see you as a caregiver. They see you as someone who's nurturing, loving. They see you as someone who's sensual, who's connected to their feminine energy or their... Um, their feminine energy that's what i'm feeling they see you as an outsider someone who's different how else do people view you they see you as someone who takes chances you gamble and they see you as someone who is free like a child um in terms of optimism and open-mindedness open mind open-mindedness they see you as someone who is curious the advocate. They also see you as someone who stands up for yourself and for others. Okay. Anything else? Hmm. They see you as the leader. This is the father card. They see you as someone who's in charge of your own life. And you also are a very deep lover. Okay. Um, all right. Let's get this deck. one card how do people view you in general you can shoulder many burdens and are able to support many people so they see you as someone who no matter what you go through you can handle it and you still move through it with grace and joy and love and compassion in your heart for others and for yourself how do people view you in work how do people view you in work how do people view you in work You usually create plans, hobbies, or events to enable passionate love. So they see you as someone who is always creating new ideas, who's very passionate about you, about what you do. They also see you as someone who's patient when it comes to new things, new connections, new relationships, new opportunities. Okay, now how do people see you in terms of love? That was too many cards. We're not going to take that. Just one, please. Spirit, just one. I'm hearing you, people may look at you as someone who has lots of op options and they don't know who you're going to choose. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. You're good at making big love decisions and change doesn't scare you. So you're not afraid to cut things off if it doesn't serve you. So people see you as having lots of options. So like you... They could even see you as someone who always has someone waiting in the wings, like ready. But I don't, I don't think that they think that in a way that's like, oh, they sleep around or anything. I think it's a, an energy of they could always have something better. And so people almost feel this lack of confidence because they're like, I may not be the best for them. Interesting. You are a person of love, fire, creativity, and passion, and you are admired. Yep. And you expect wonderful love to surprise you this lifetime, so it will. So you expect the best, you expect the most, and you're not going to settle for less. That's beautiful and inspiring. 
All right, let's get you one overall card and then we're gonna be done. One last card, please. One overall card to end this reading. Ah. Okay. Oh my gosh. A lot, a lot of cards wanna come out, but we have the 10 of cups. So emotional fulfillment is coming in. Happiness, joy, love. Yep, this Empress energy is coming in. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You're about to shine so bright, like a, a star. And you're gonna be seen. You're gonna be really seen for who you are, for your authentic energy. And yeah, there's this internal fire, internal power within you right now that's gonna be calling in sisterhood, deep, healthy connections, and emotional fulfillment in everything that you do. So that's beautiful. You're open and ready to receive and you shall have anything that you wish in this life because you do not settle. You do not settle. All right, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. If you would like to, please come back another day. If you'd like to have any personal services from me, they're all listed down below and I'd love to work with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you very soon. Have a great one.